five miles north of Goodison Park in Anfield lies Rosset Park in Crosby, home of Marine AFC. The game's the same, but there the similarities seem to end. Window cleaner and manager, Rowley Howard, has seen it all in 27 years, but it's never been as bad as this. Put your hands up. What has any of you won? Come on. What has any of you won? Have you won a league? 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 Rowley Howard you... has won nearly every trophy in non-league football. But with an inexperienced side and no cash for new players, the have team's in the middle of a relegation have battle. You? Have you? We've two that's won a league in here. And you're trying to dictate to me how things go on. I'm the most enthusiastic person at Marine, I know that. I don't think any player is more enthusiastic than me. People may look at me and say, who, who does he think he is? I've loved my job as a window cleaner. I get a kick out of that as well as a wage. I can come home, put my ladders and wash leathers away and go out and be with all the lads and uh, go out and watch games and be somewhere that, uh, you know, that you like being. Marine was formed 104 years ago in neighbouring Waterloo and the team became semi-professional in the 70s. The club has always existed on the fringes of the Football League, playing across the north against sides like Lancaster City and Accrington Stanley. Now, Marine's team of policemen, postmen, accountants and ex-professionals have to survive in a very different environment. Gates are down to the 300 mark and there are no players likely to earn the club money through lucrative transfer deals. Struggling at the bottom of the Unibond Premier League, two down from the nationwide third division, Marine desperately need to win against visitors Gainsborough Trinity. It's not just another game because we've got to keep uh, we've got to keep getting points, haven't we? Um, we're uh, we've pulled ourselves up a little bit the last seven games, but uh, we've still got a long way to go. It's been a shock for everybody at Marine that things on the field haven't gone, you know, according to plan. Marine's survival rests heavily on the shoulders of experienced players like current captain Keith Proctor. But work and family commitments means less and less time for football. Rowley always tells us that um, football comes after your family and comes after your job. But when you're a footballer, it's the most important thing to you. And we should be trying to win games for Marine Football Club. Everybody should be on the ball. We stood there watching. Maybe they've been at league clubs and maybe they've been at other clubs. But I can only go off what we did when we won the leagues. Kerry, are you interested in this or what? Hey, Because you can go home if you don't want to be bothered. Get on your toes like everybody else, lad. Basically, they're, they're good lads. I think it just takes longer to get them to do what you want to do. An hour before kickoff, and the opposition coach arrives. Know what your team is yet? Yes, I do know yeah. what my team is. Oh, right. Okay. There you are, then that'll save a lot of. Any, any changes from that? I should say yes, there's quite a few. While Rowley prepares the team, Chairman Tom Culshaw ensures that all match day formalities Rowley. are in okay. order. You've done a good job here, Frank, on this these team sheets. My it? God. It, it was it's a... not, I haven't read it, Peter Brown's written it. <laughs> I don't write that out, Tom. You'll... Can you read him? One, please. Turnstile receipts are the club's main source of revenue, but with the team's current form, it's just the die-hard fans coming through the gates. Don't have any money left by the time no. <laughs> Good lad. You all right? Come on, boys! Come on, boys! Come on, boys! The only reason I don't shout and ball is that after a lot of years I've, I've come to the conclusion that shouting and balling doesn't do any good because half the players don't listen to you anyway. Hey, no, it's out! Referee! Ref! The jack in the fish, lad! You a lovely fucking hard man, or what, like? The substitute for Marine is Robbie Talbot, who replaces Jim Blackhurst. 
There's a lot of silly stuff talked about football. It's a simple game made hard by players. One nil to Gainsborough Trinity. And things are destined to get worse. Once again, inexperience shows, and Marine finished the first half two down. It's not just the tee that's weak. That is the worst half for a long, 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 long time. The worst half for a long time. And to be fair, to be fair, they never give you. They, they've not given you a lot of problems until they got two up. The only thing I'm frightened of now is that they're a, a, a team of old asses that have been in the league and they'll know what to do to, to stamp it out now. Yeah. Well, get your heads up, get your heads up. Well, yes. Yes. I don't think we've mustered one shot, have we? Still no down now, we might as well take some chances. Oh, the bodies in go the and box. have a go now, go and have a go. Despite the rousing words, Rowley is not optimistic. Yeah, I'll tell you, you've never got in front of goal to have a shot. Marine pull one back through ex Everton apprentice Richie Townsend. Well done, Richie. Come on, get us another. But time runs out for Rowley. Another home defeat, taking Marine further down the table. While his teammates enjoy a lie-in on Sunday morning, it's Oral Park Baptist Church in Bootle for lifelong Christian Keith Proctor and his young family. There's been so many times on Sunday I've sat there in, in, the, in the service and played, replayed the whole game in my mind. There's been so many times when I've done that and I've had a disappointing game on a Saturday and I just sat there all through the same and I just thought about what I did wrong. Chris, chill. Have you got uh, my Bible and stuff? I'm not going to be there and all of a sudden pull New Testaments out my socks and my shin pads and say, read this, Mr. Centre Forward, or whatever. When people have asked me Christians about my faith, I'll quite happily answer them. I'm not going to force it down anybody's throat. Things are about to change off the pitch at Marine. With the help of a football trust grant, the club's spending £200,000 on two new stands. It's the culmination of years of fundraising and the biggest change to Rosser Park in over 70 years. Chairman Tom Culshaw is outlining the plans to the league's sponsors. To move to a new ground, the cost would be just uh, astronomical. So how long have you been playing football here? Since about the turn of the century, I think. But, uh, yeah, I've uh, been here a long time. And, um, and people still come in wandering now and they say, Oh, it hasn't changed much. <laughs> I said, wait, wait till next wait season. Till next Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tom's helped by 11 other committee members who meet each week to look after every aspect of Marine on and off the pitch. With an ambitious redevelopment scheme, every penny counts. I suppose at the start, it was um, uh, a diversion from, from the workplace. You, you came here and you relaxed a bit, but... Um, uh, now, of course, it, it's, it's much harder than it used to be. Um, one of the things that stands out um, is, of course, we're finishing the season on April the, April the 17th, yeah. uh, and we've got cost forecast and budgeted football expenditure of £5,500 in May with zero football income. Well, I think we've yeah. got one or two problems. On the financial front, we've got a forecast which is underachieving and uh, we've got to try and, um, and pull things together before the end of the financial year which is end of May. 
the football side is, is the problem this year and uh, I can't see a quick solution to that one unless um, we have a, a win tomorrow night against Bursko and we get a, a, perhaps a draw against Liverpool or Everton at home. But a 2-1 defeat away to Bursko was not what Tom had in mind. Marine's last chance for Big Gate against a Premiership reserve side had gone. See, where's your Marine, lads? Shouting, hey? Get the that time on you, lads. One nil. How lucky. We're rolling. Clean your windows. Well, it's, it's cold night, miserable night. And uh, just going to have a drink with uh, the chairman of Bursco now. Uh, and uh, we'll forget about the game, I think. He won't forget about it, but I will try to. <laughs> and if you, get, if you get a good yeah. gate yeah. against whoever, you can get Husband and wife Dave and Johnny Rannard are holding a fundraising night. Country rock is their theme. I've got uh, pasta, rice salad, I've got uh, tomatoes with mozzarella. I've got uh, little frankfurters, cheese and pate, and little dips. I think that's it today in French bread. This year, the Marine Supporters Association raised £6,000 for the club. It can be hard work, and Dave is never far from the ground. Are you going to be dancing tonight? Depends on what I'm right. drinking. Oh, what are you drinking, yeah. right? Yeah. Double whiskies again. Shandies. Whiskey shandies. Honest. I can't find me other crackers. There must be more crackers. I had them in a bag. And I brought them with me. Are they in the car? Tonight it's a live band. But they are professional. Um, so we thought we'd come in the big room and have a good dance. No, I did put them in the car. But things normally don't go to plan at this stage. Yeah. It comes together at the end, but... Uh, there's always a problem or two on. We on obviously well. We end up enjoying it. I think. I think I'm going to look, look for me. Um, the crackers. Yeah. You're quite happy to let me do the. You do the running round. You let me no, organise it. To be fair, she's the brains behind some of it. She's got the ideas. <laughs> she does do the organising of this, but I tend to be like a pack horse. Well, yeah. That's and what you're there and, for. And things go wrong, so she needs someone to shout something. With the band about to play, there was still a lot of empty seats. Not what Dave and Johnny would hope for. It'll all be like this. Come nine o'clock, half nine, it'll be full the room. We're assured that there's about 13 people going to turn up from one group very shortly. And another 10 or so from another group. At Difficult the moment, it's slow. If we can get 70, 80, we'll be happy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Marine Football Club. Another MSA evening for you. It gives me great pleasure to welcome once again Carl White and his Southern Justice Band. Big round of applause, please. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's just How you doing, all right? It's great to be back. Hopefully we'll have a good night like we did last time. There's a bit more room. Here it is, swinging doors. if you want to know. I don't know where all the other 20 or 30 people should be, but they're not here. Yeah. I'm very disappointed. I shall have a few words when I get older people. One, two, three, four, five, six. I tell you, but what can you do? I can only give the tickets out for people to yeah, we'll be there. I know they bloody well love them. I've got swinging doors, a few bars, and the bars do. We shall have a good evening, we'll go up and dance, and we'll really have a good time, whether they've come or not, I don't care now. So just stop by any time you want to. As the band play on, Marine coach Roger Patience has business to attend to backstage. It's a regular Friday night job, this. Not usually as early as this. Sometimes, like, like before the uh, training night, I have about a dozen balls to clean, you know. Those ISIS balls, 
they don't have to, according to the pressure, they don't have to be too hard. It can be between like uh, 10 and 12 or something, but some of them like them a little bit harder. You can't win, actually. I mean, I'd pump these up in a minute and check them with a gauge. And then you give the referee a ball an hour before the match. He's got it in there for an hour. And then you go out there and somebody complains out. And he goes with his sums. And we've checked them all with a gauge. You think you've got it. You know, you say to them, like, uh, you've got a gauge in your thumb there or something like that. You know, and you think you're getting a bit of bounce them, like, but they've all been checked. Not too bad. <coughs> Barry enjoyed himself last night. I believe so, yeah. He was rang me before. Didn't help me with any questions. He's a part of <laughs> There it is now. The morning after the night before. And the supporters are off to the former colliery side of Prickley in West Yorkshire. It's a trip ex Marine player Reg Garns has made before. We can't help them not having a good pitch. They didn't put the flipping cold slag up there. So we can't take it out of the poor flipping lads, can we? <laughs> Hey, I just reckon we'll get on today. I reckon we'll win. He dash went 2-0. Now, last time we played there, this goal, the goalkeeper took a goal kick and he came back into the goal again. Because there's no protection for the wind, you know, it just comes. Yeah. So you just have to play according to what the weather is. The area was devastated by the closure of the Frickley Mine. Now, only the football team remains. All the best then. Okay. <laughs> It's a fixture Supporters Association chairman and retired teacher Barry Godfrey has come to dread. Most of the grounds we go to, relationships are quite pleasant. Frickly, there's always a bit of an edge. This is not the coach trip to do. Frickly away is not the trip. They don't have very many supporters, but they do have some very vocal supporters. Quite unpleasantly vocal sometimes. Get in front of him! He can cut that bastard off. Oh. It just feels like another planet. It really is grim. I do have a sort of grudging admiration for the way the place is, this club has kept going. I don't quite know how they do it. I don't think they've got a supporters association such as Marine has, but it is fairly depressing, isn't it? After defeat against Gainsborough and Bursco, Marine and their Brazilian away kit desperately need to stop the rot. But there's very little South American flair in this afternoon's clash. Every first half I've seen of Brickley, awful. A wind, howling wind, rain threatening, cold, miserable, niggly. Typical Brickley match. Nil nil at half time, and Rowley is far from happy. We need points. Do you feel you're doing enough? You think you're doing enough? Do you feel you're doing enough? In 10 minutes, we tried to put Morgan straight onto the full back, didn't we? Give you the shout. We tried to change it like that to try and get yeah, Morgan on the side, Shelley. No. Your work rate's not halfway there. You look like little boys lost at times. Some of you think you're better players than what you are. And what I tell you, or what Roger tells you, you know, to help you, you think, oh, well, you know, like uh, Everton told me that, and Liverpool told me that, and Crew told me that. You know that Liverpool, Everton, and Crew, now you're here. Put your hands up. What has any of you won? Come on. What has any of you won? Have you won a league? 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 Have you? Have you? Have you? Have you won a league? We've two that's won a league in here. 
and you're trying to dictate to me how things go on. But I tell you what, if you come off there with no points at all, and you've carried on like you've done in the first half, right? One or two of you have got problems, I'm telling you. With Rowley's words still ringing in their ears, Marine take the early initiative. Come on, Marine! But can top scorer John Morgan hold his nerve? It's coming now. Yes! But Marine's joy was short lived. A vintage Unibond League goal. But as far as Rowley is concerned, the signs are encouraging. Listen, just listen to me. Just listen to me. First of all, second half, much better, much nearer than what we're fucking looking for, right? Not the fucking finished article, but a lot, a lot better than what we're looking for. The only problem now is that we should have gone on and won it, shouldn't we? Should have gone on and won it. <laughs> Inspired by the result, goalkeeper Chris Clark saves his final performance for the coach home. Tonight, Matthew, Chris Clark is going to be Robbie Williams! Hell is gone and heaven's here, there's nothing left for you to fear. Shake your ass, come over here, now scream! Woo! I'm a burning effigy of everything I used to be. Oh, my rock of empathy, my dear. So come on, let me entertain you. Let me entertain you. Next week on Marine Lives, it's more A&E than AFC, as things get physical on the pitch. The club's prodigal son makes his return. I never used to do that when I was here first. I must have done something right. And tempers fray in the changing room. Life's too short for you to die, so grab yourself an alibi. Heaven knows your mother lied. Mon cher! <laughs> Separate your right from wrongs. Come and sing a different song. The kettle's answer don't belong. My share. So come on, let me entertain you. Life in the Unibond Premier League is hard. It's hard for clubs to survive in the face of falling gate receipts, and it's hard for players who have to balance work and family commitments with competing in football's most physical league. Merseyside's Marine AFC are struggling at the wrong end of the table, and with a £200,000 ground redevelopment looming, money is tight. It's only the commitment of people like ex-player Ray Coleman that keeps the club afloat. I came here initially when I was 23 and I've been here on and off ever since. Played for 10 years, uh, left and played two years at Formby and then went into coaching and managing. And I retired from all that at the end of, I packed all that up at the end of last season. And now I just do keep this place nailed together. I do all the plumbing and the decorating and bits of building and I do the pitch. And, uh, Try not to get too involved with the with the football. John Gortry is club captain of Marine. 
He's been playing non-league ever since Bolton released him 14 years ago, combining his football career with full-time work as a postman in Southport. Some people say, post postman in the rain and the cold in the winter, but I tell you what, you don't go out and find another job. But believe you me, I've, I've had other jobs and there's a lot worse jobs than being a postman. All right, the pay's not good, but for actually being out and being your own boss when you get on the road, it can't beat it. John's not the only footballing postman. Marine's golden boy, John Morgan, works at the same depot. But his 19 goals haven't been enough to turn the club's fortunes round. What's happening, Big Rick? Are you going to score on Saturday, Morgan? What? Score. Just a couple. You're a goal, aren't I? Better than To be honest with you, I'm, I'm disappointed in Marine in the fact that he seemed to have got into a glut of that'll do. It, as long as we survive and we have a bit of a cup run, that'll do. But um, I'm, I like to think I've still got something inside me that tells me I want to win. And, and a lot of the players want to win things as well. Programs, get your programs. Marine are at home to fellow Unibon League strugglers, Lancaster City. Relations between the two teams are usually good, but today's a game that both need to win. Marine's manager, Roly Howard, has to motivate a demoralised and inexperienced side struggling against injury problems. Listen, boys, we talked about it before. I'm not going through it again. You've got to go out there, win the physical battle first and keep it up all the time. You've got to earn the right to space. You've got to earn the right to play. You know what you've got to do. You know you're capable of doing it, right? So go and get it done. Come on. Oh, 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 oh. An early clash of heads sets the tone for a bloody game. Midfielder Ricky Bainbridge is first to need attention. John's got a serious ankle injury, which has kept him out of the team for the last three months. What a good feeling it's not broke or it's not chipped, but for uh, the powers that beat and all obviously I've got to get an x-ray. I knew he was worried last night because I could just tell he was very quiet, he doesn't say anything, he just doesn't, not a mood, but he goes extremely quiet. Um, so obviously he's, he's worried about it. Um, but I think he, need, he needs to go for this x-ray. The best scenario for me is I get the all clear from the x-ray, the club doctor then says, yeah, it's, gonna, it's ligaments, and they put me in touch with a specialist who's going to say, it's going to be three weeks, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. I mean, the worst scenario is that I'm going to end up with an operation. I mean, that means definitely no, no game for testimonial for me. And you're looking at time off work and a lot of things. When, that's the only trouble when you're a part-time footballer, semi-professional, you've got a, a full-time employment, and you've got, you're facing an operation. It's how lenient work are going to be with you if you're facing a long time, you know? Back on the pitch, the injury list is lengthening. A shattered cheekbone needs hospital treatment. It's John Morgan who has the chance to give Marine the lead. But he fails to take it. Well, he's been giving me some stick in the post, obviously, saying how good he is at penalties. So he won't be saying much on Monday now, will he? <laughs> As Richie Townsend gives Marine a breakthrough, club doctor Steve McNally has John's x ray results. The bright side would have been for someone to say nothing chipped away, nothing broke, nothing fractured. Mm. The downside was the phone call that I got. Well, as you know, we thought it was a, a basic ligament injury, although it was a moderately severe one, and your ankle was unstable. 
Um, it, it hasn't responded as we, we thought it would do. And the x-ray we did earlier this week has shown that you've got a small ossicle, which is a separated bone fragment just below the point of the, the ankle bone there. I, I, I can get my head around what you've told me. I can, yeah. I can start to understand what I've got to do. But what I'm saying is if I put a strap in on, can I still have 15 minutes, 20 yeah. minutes in my testimonial? Yeah, yeah. there's uh, no reason why you can't do that. It'll, it'll probably hurt, it'll be sore afterwards. But uh, yeah, you're not going to do any long-term permanent damage by doing that. Um, but also I'll have a word with Rowling in the club in terms of private treatment, perhaps. The club does not have medical insurance. If a private operation is needed, John may have to pay. Even if you had an operation you know, on Monday for this, you're looking at between six and eight weeks for rehabilitation. So this season's gone for you. But there's better news on the pitch. Marine's new boy, Robbie Talbot, scores the second. A valuable win, taking Marine three points further from relegation. Hey, lads, have we come and made something? Hey, three months ago, we have lost that, but we didn't do it for a change. Hey, Johnny Burns, well done. He never knocked a lot of the second half. He did well. We lost that three months ago. Listen, listen. Listen, on a fucking sour note, I'll, I'll, I'll say well done in a minute, but we cannot keep fucking making mistakes at the back. Cannot keep doing it. But the lad's gone on, done brilliant for us, got us a goal, well done. Where are you? You're getting enough fucking knocks, lad. Yeah, well, that's yeah. Well done. right. Hey. 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 First of all, for Lancaster City, the man of the match was Stuart Diggle. Yeah. And for Marine, the fabulous Richie Townsend. Yeah. As the players celebrate in the bar, Dr. Steve McNally's day is far from over. Ricky Bainbridge's head needs stitches. All right yesterday. Most of that. What happened to the big lad, Steve? He's gone to casualty. He was badly concussed. Um, and he had a possible cheekbone fracture as well. So we were going to let him go back home, but we thought an ambulance was the best option. Yeah. OK, he's probably filming, pulling it together, but is that OK? Yeah, it's fine, yeah. OK, Rick, that's done. Yeah, um, yeah, just put a bit of Vaseline on to seal it. Oh, not no more. Just a touch. Can't get it out. Clubs like this just haven't got the resources to, to, to cope with um, the demands of injuries. Also, their player turnover is very, very high. I think last, last season, it was yeah. over 40 yeah. players, I think, went through the first team. So uh, they might only be here for six or eight weeks to do a job for them. Um, it's not worth the club paying out to insure them. And the lads themselves usually don't have any medical insurance. They're really at, at risk of uh, sustaining serious injury that could prevent them from partaking in any sport for some time. Are you doing the tops today? No. Well, I've not brought my big ladders. Do on Friday? I'll do on Friday for you, with pleasure, sir. OK, mate, because they need doing. The summer's coming up. The captain of the good ship Marine has plenty of time to plan tactics on his window cleaning bed, round in Southport. What, mate? Did I catch you in bed this morning? Yeah, you made me get up and get a shower and everything when you told me. It's been my life for a long time, and uh, you just you just can't dismiss it. And uh, it, there's something about Marine. When the day does come, I'd just like to leave the club in uh, in good hands and, and as well as it can be on the field. Where are you in the league now, Ro? Well, we're safe, but... You're safe? I mean, you don't like finishing. So you'll, bottom, you'll not be you? going down then? No. No, we'll be right. Anything from quiz nights to squeaky turnstiles. This week, Chairman Tom Culshaw is letting players go. Anyone who wasn't here would like to raise any points on that. Um, he did mention that three players have left.
Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's yeah, in the last week, yeah. Yeah. You've read it in the paper. I haven't. Haven't you? Oh. Um, Jimmy Blackhurst's uh, contract has been uh, cancelled after agreement with him. Neil Sang has, uh, has been uh, told that his services are no longer required. Uh, he's not uh, really been fair to us, really. He's not skipped training, I don't know how many times. It's not fair on the other guys who come down training and he's just managing to do it when he feels like it. Great. All right. Thanks a lot, Eddie. Midfielder Neil Sang played at Everton and Torquay before joining the club. It wasn't a partnership which suited either party, and having left Marine, he's now spending more and more time working at his father's decorating business. Every few years, clubs like Marine produce players that make it to the highest level. Today, the most famous old boy is back at Rosset Park. A busman's holiday, as it turns out, because local bus drivers have hired the ground for their cup final. I don't have to pay. Just Rowley being the manager still. <laughs> Jason McAteer played for the reserves at Marine before making his name at Bolton and then Liverpool. He's now Blackburn Rovers. But surprisingly, he never made it as a regular in the first team at Rossett Park. I missed a sitter here once. We had a game in a cup. I think it was a semi-final. A ball came across. And I should have scored and I put it over the bar. It's like in the last minute. He'd been on a run, I think it was six games unbeaten, and, uh, and Rowley dropped me. Uh, that was a little bit of a disappointment. I thought I'd been doing okay. Um, uh, you know, the old saying in football is you don't, you, you know, you don't fix it if it's not broken. And he changed things, maybe looking to go on another level, I don't know. But, you know, I, I swallowed my disappointment and tried to get behind the lads as much as I can. Uh, they then got beat against uh, Gainsborough, 2-1. I came on a substitute, thought I did well. Rowley's own words was, you know, you nearly turned it round for us there, and I thought they did okay there as well. Again, the, then they got beat against Bersco, lost 2-1. He said he dropped me from my fitness. But, I mean, these things happen in football, you get dropped, you know, managers fall out, you know, lose a little bit of faith in you, or whatever, and you've just got to accept that as part and parcel of football. But with a successful family business behind him, Neil's got plenty of time to indulge his other sporting interests. All day on the course, you get complimentary copies for you and your guests. Uh, they wash and valet your car for you while you're out playing, they polish your shoes. Uh, I should be alright in polishing shoes actually, because I used to be on the boots and everything. Fucking oh, flipping dog on the course here, look. Longer. Hope your ball hasn't landed in dog shit. Golf's the last thing on John Gautry's mind. Today's visit to specialist John Walsh could reveal the extent of his ankle injury. This is an x-ray of your uh, right ankle. And uh, this is a view from the side. It looks perfectly OK. Yeah. The joint's well preserved. There's no sign of wear and tear, arthritis or anything. This is a view from the front. And uh, you see where you had your problem before, where John Metcalf did his operation. Clearly, uh, looking at the scar you've got in your history, it sounds like you had a ligament injury, lateral ligament injury. I suspect that's what's happened is you've had a, a ligament injury and he also a little bit of bone that's just not healed back into place. Right. <laughs> Feeling I got was like being here, it was all the players who could have played, but they had, they had something missing, like the first team here. Cheers. I never used to do that when I was here first. I must have done something right. <laughs> In fact, that's the first time I've ever done that here. Sound like that. I've got friends who grew up with you, you think you would have made it. They just don't make it, and you think, you know, I've just been so lucky. The scan shows that uh, the problem is actually within the joint, and that there is, a, there is indeed a loose fragment of bone there, which I doubt very much. If there is something uh, loose in the joint, then yes, the answer will be to attempt to treat that by keel surgery. You're absolutely right. right. So. It's, you, you have to sort of, that's why the reason for doing the scans is to help pre pre prepare what you know you want you may find and your sort of surgical approach to it. Right, well, good luck on Sunday. And, uh, Thanks very much. Take care Lovely. of yourself. Thanks Thanks for your time. The news isn't good. John needs more scans, but an operation seems likely. The season's over for him, and at 32, maybe his career.
gutted really because it, it's all starting to become like a bit of a nightmare. It's feel, it feels like it's something or nothing, yet it's turning out to be an absolute catastrophe. So it's just like, I build my hopes up thinking it's one thing and I'm just shut down and pick myself up again. Well, that, that, was a, that was a disappointing thing at the time for me, like not getting on here. My dad, from an early age, drilled into me like, I, I, you must believe in yourself and you must believe in your ability. You know. So I always believed when I was here, I was good enough to play in the first game. I was probably like eight stone wet through, you know. You've got to be a bit more, have a bit more about you. And I think that's what Rowley didn't fancy about me, that I was such a lightweight player. It's Staley Bridge Celtic away for Marine, playing in the Brazilian away strip. But without an injured John Gautry and the suspended John Morgan, they're underdogs against a team packed with ex-league players. At least 79-year-old fan Reg Garnett believes in them. Long time beat you, many. Oh! Oh, nice, yeah. Staley Bridge dominate the early play. Goalkeeper Chris Clark's mistake gives Staley Bridge a 1 0 lead. Staley's not to be down after. Must have been on this. Tell me that. One on. The ups and downs of non league football. It's nothing strange to Reg. 50 years ago, he played in Marine's most famous match. 6,000 packed Rossett Park to see a visiting Nigerian side. Pennants were presented to each other by the opposing captains before the start of the game between the Nigerian Football Association team and Marine Crosby. The Nigerians spurn the use of football boots, but they have no qualms about taking on a team which uses them. George O'Neill there, love. Was it? George O'Neill, yeah. He's in Canada now. In fact, they kicked the ball so hard and so successfully that they won by five goals to two. Hardly a barefoot shuffle. Reg played at Marine for six seasons. The hammering the team received at the bare feet of the Nigerians still baffles him. Well, we didn't know what was going to happen. Like we didn't know. We had no idea they were playing in bare feet. We people probably thought that oh, bare feet was a bit real easy to beat them. Like, and maybe we were too confident. But it just showed, as I as showed you there, they were far faster to the ball. And this was only because they didn't have any flipping boots on. But they kicked to so they had boots They kicked us on. They really did. They had ankle bands. Yeah. Whose side are you on? <laughs> I was on there. I was there. <laughs> At Staley Bridge, Marine are looking for a late winner. But it's not coming from teenager Adriano Rigolioso, or Shelley, as he's known.
You're not free of relegation. Because anybody that gives goals away, like we've given two goals away today, right? And look at the goals against. Right? That's nearly 60 goals we've given away this season. 60 goals. <clears throat> You'll not do it, lads. If we miss one up there, I would miss that shell, I don't know. We should be scoring in them positions. At this level, at this level, shell, we should be scoring in them positions. I don't care what you say. I've just told you what I've done. You can say what you say. You, you could have dropped five places tonight. I just can't understand we've lost that game. Despite the miss, Shelley is still a hit with the kids. Stand-in captain Keith Proctor sums up the mood of the team. It's so disappointing when the lads battle so hard and so long and you give away, you know, a goal in the last minute. That was a bad goal. But, uh, you know, players will learn, hopefully and uh, we'll have to fight another day. Next week on Marine Lives, will Captain Courageous John Gautry be fit for his own testimonial match? And the club's championship winning side relive the glory years. The string of defeats has left Merseyside's Marine FC drifting towards the lower reaches of the Unibond Premier League. Manager Roly Howard's list of problems is lengthening. He's having to replace injured players like Captain John Gautry with teenagers from the reserve team. The club's ground redevelopment project means Chairman Tom Culshaw can't provide money to strengthen the squad. There was a match here last, match here last night against uh, a local side. So maybe they need a little um, One player little that Marine have released is ex Everton and Torquay pro like Neil Sang. He's made the break from playing to launch a new career as a football agent. I mean, even at this early stage, there's about 15 players agreed to come and join me. I mean, that's fantastic. I haven't even really tried to go and get any others in. So at this early stage, 15, uh, that, that should keep me fairly busy, yeah. Remember him, the goalie? Neil's got his eye on Southport forward Lee Trendle. The team plays in the nationwide conference, one league up from Marine. There's your space if you speak. I've just got great touch. Oh, unbelievable. Much six than Paul Daniel. No close control, oh, never yeah. seen nothing like it. Keep the ball all day with him. I'd be great on there now, not having to run anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be great on there. I'd be like Pele. I should have said Jan Mold. <laughs> you had the centre circle to yeah, yeah, that that'd be my own, yeah. But this lad's got so much ability. If a club took him and gave him a chance, I think he'd go really, really hard. I mean, like Shelley, he's got a great chance, this lad. Marine are playing Geisley in Yorkshire. What do you do, Ian? What do you think of all the games? We've drawn. We've drawn, or lost? We've won two of them so Rowley's called up teenager Terry Bowker from the reserve team. Terry's dad, Terry Senior, keeps a close eye on his son's career. 
What he said is a divide between Manchester and Liverpool and a bit of rivalry, but he's been treated great by the people of the Marine and he's well chuffed today and he just hopes to get us a start. And like I say, uh, he won't let himself down, hopefully. You young fellas should be, should be running them into the depth. Let's go out there and show a lot, a lot of enthusiasm, right? From the minute you go out there, right, let's have bags of talking, bags of enthusiasm. Your application to the game has got to be second to none. Ricky, come on. Let's make the keeper do some work. All the best, Jerry. Come on. Come on. Right, you got six minutes. Let's go, boys. Come on. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Hey, come on. All the best. Nothing, Jeff. Geisley and a strong side, pushing for promotion into the conference. I used to play myself, you know, so I do pull him up on his mistakes after the game. And it doesn't take long for Geisley to show their class. At Southport, Neil's impressed. Obviously, I'm itching to get on there. Ipsen. Lee Trundle. Yeah! yeah! Lee gives the Sand Grounders a 1 0 lead. Goal score for Southport. Number 10, Lee Trundle. Good. The paper's still on the wing there. You know, get a little free kick. That's what you want, that's brilliant. So that he can now get into the box, set things up, set plays, do his stuff from there. And he's just scored a great goal, as you saw there, little header. He can do it with his head as well as his feet, that's what we want. He's looking the, uh, the article at the moment, but a long way to go, I'm sure he'll later come up with something else. Just keep watching him, be brilliant. Half time, the Marine are still one down. He's doing all right, you know, he's got, he's got an old pro there, Bobby Davidson, no doubt he'll, he'll learn from that. You know, there's a few things he's done where my lad's been a bit, you know, react a little bit quicker to things, but all in all, I think he's done all right, you know. Where, where was all this growling? Come on, come on. Hey, do you know how long it lasted, lads? Do you know how long it lasted, all this growling in here? Four minutes. Four minutes. If you don't hold it up front, they're going to knock it down your throats all afternoon. Right? What have they been doing, Procky? Knocking it down your throats all afternoon. The midfield now are just sitting on, 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 the, uh, on the back four. That's where the danger's coming from, they're knocking the ball up the lines. You know, and if, if they're getting to them in the midfield, I think we could uh, get right back into the game. We've got the place to do it. Of course we're still in with a chance. But you've got to get together and work together. Okay. But things soon get worse. Soft green is all again. On it. Hey. Okay, guys, we're at number 10, Mick Morell. Twenty-five, Neil's the country's youngest agent. He's hoping his experience as a player will give his company, Sports Star Promotions, the edge when it comes to spotting talent. I'm an agent now, yeah. Honestly, so that's why I'm down. I was looking at Sunderland today. Yeah. Just to have a look and like this, like see yourself, yeah. if you fancy. You know what I mean? I'm trying to get players all signed on. Any good young lad yeah. who I think well, has got a chance to make it. Down. Happy day. He didn't let me down. Good to see you, kid. You all right? Yeah, sound. Good man, it's good. Eh? What's he said? Yeah, I'm just um, pleased with the um, three points, isn't it? Because we're Happy. down there now. Oh, good win though, mate, won't it? You get fully fit at this level, mate, you'll stand out like a short one. Goal as well. As well. <laughs> <laughs>
Who <laughs> needed one as well. Oh, yeah. That's it, but that'll set you off now. You might get a bag full of next load of six, seven games, something like that, might you? Two nil. Another marine defeat. Did all right. First full game, isn't it? All right. So one of that books. All right. You're growling in here like lions. You go out there and if you're looking for for bits of clover, bear you're going. It's easy in here. Four minutes it lasted. For Christ's sake, boys. Let's do, let's have some say what's going to go on in the league. Don't let's hope that other teams are going to give it to us. We've done really well in the second half, right? You've done well for your first game, Terry. Well done. But don't let it, don't let it be as we're looking for other teams to lose. Let's do something about it ourselves. And if it's not happened this week, let's start and make it happen next week. He's in bed at half ten on a Friday night when he's got a game. Don't go out when his mates are going to clubs and that. And uh, he lives, he works all week and his football is his main priority at weekend. And uh, if people around him are not giving 100% like he does, you know, he, he gets into him and he just don't like losing. He's always had it in him from being a kid, you know. He's, uh, I've actually seen him cry when he was younger when we lost, uh, lost the odd game, you know, in a cup final or something. But, he just don't like losing at all, you know, he's committed. Neil's work representing Lee is just beginning. I've seen him play a lot, lot better, put it that way, but I mean, as a centre forward, he scored his goal, job done, brilliant, pleased with that. And he's more than happy for us to, uh, to, to look after him. Wes Brown, you know, he plays for United in the first team. He, he's one of my idols. You know. He's only young, but, you know, he's a great player. Yeah, I've seen her a couple of times in nightclubs as well. Spoke to her a couple of times. <laughs> I play for Marine and uh, <laughs> like you were there. <laughs> I've just got to keep working, but I've got to be at United when I'm older. If I get picked up then, I'll work hard at it and then hopefully United you know, you might come in for me. <laughs> it's a dream, like, but you know, you never know, do you? <laughs> Marine's captain, John Gautry, has been at the club for 14 years, since Bolton released him as a teenager. I've cut myself shaving this morning. Have you equipped yourself uh, an electric shaver? Oh, yeah. Uh, never done it before, but it happens to do it this morning. Um, An ankle injury has kept him out for three months, but today is his testimonial match, and he's determined to um, get a game. Who else do I need to ring? No, I've rung Mark. Daddy, it's John Bailey. It's been a hard season for the Gautries, but today should be a highlight. Hello. All right, John. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Too right, Bill. You're not crying off, are you? Yeah. Yeah. Right, well, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's all still on. All systems go for a 12.30 start. All right, mate. Thanks, John. Bye. Groundsman and ex-player Ray Coleman's known John from the start. Came here about 14 years ago, I think it is now, 14, 15 years ago. And he's just been a regular ever since, and he's always given 100%. Games I've seen him play, he's always given 100%. I've got to say, I mean, I hate, I don't like the fellow at all. Um, and I think, uh, I think he should have packed up three or four years ago. But um, he's been fantastic for the club. And, uh, uh, he deserves a good day today. Are you all right, mate? Um, two things. First of all, Lorraine's asked me to ring you to remind you about don't forget you to bring your raffle ticket stubs. Don't forget to bring your raffle ticket stubs. And secondly, you don't, do you mind taking a few photographs for me? Excellent. You know, like, um, like group one, sort of like when we come out, we'll, I'll have like a couple of team shots and then in the centre, in the centre circle when we're like flicking the coin, etc., like that. Excellent, mate. Thanks a lot. John's arranged for Marine's championship winning side of five years ago to reform and play a Southport 11. For John, it's a welcome reminder of the glory days. Right, well, the FA Cup holders, of course, are Liverpool. But there are two other teams in the city of Liverpool hoping for FA Cup success this season. Everton and non-league Marine. The HFS Loans League side faced league opposition in the shape of Halifax Town. 
On the road from Liverpool to Southport, between the docks and the beach, lies the Crosby home of Marine Football Club. And on a day of marine weather, they were three up by half-time against third division Halifax Town. John Gortry, hardly a giant, adding a second to Tony Ward's opener. And then five minutes before the interval, Eddie Murray's free kick turned past a wandering goalkeeper by Graham Rowlands. Marine, the Merseyside Mystery Club, managed for more than 20 years by Rowley Howard, are on the map tonight. It was absolutely fantastic. Winning became a way of life. Defeat never became... You just didn't think about defeat. You'd, you'd be driving down to a game with three or four players in the car, just talking about who was going to score and how many we were going to score. That is how it was. The feeling of invincibility its unbelievable. And it's all down to the players I've got here today. They put Marine on the mantle. Shoulders up, Rob. Many Univon League players started out with the league clubs. Kevin O'Brien's career has come full circle. After years as Marine's goalkeeper, he's back at Everton coaching apprentices. There, yeah, get the turn in, get across. There. The biggest amount of attention I got was when we played Shrewsbury in the FA Cup and we lost 11 2. Um, that was covered by Sky and BBC. And biggest support I had on, on the day was uh, Ray Clements on Sky saying he felt sorry for me, you know. Uh, but then the BBC played the, always look on the bright side of life. Dorchester Town lost 9-1 at Oxford United, while second division Shrewsbury scored even more against Paul Marine. Always look on the bright side of life. Always look on the light side of life. I need to remember saying I'm the coach on the way up. We'll either win today and become newspaper headlines at Giant Killers. I said, oh, we'll get, we'll get beat 5 or 6 nil. And uh, the words came to, it was 11 2. Good save. The job I'm in now, it's, I'm in a privileged position, really, uh, to be offered the chance to to train all day and to, to play in the environment, a football environment. Um, it's, I think I've said this before, but you know, it's the, the closest thing I can get to becoming a professional footballer. Number four followed on the arm mark. Brian Ross flipped his lines. Chris Camden wrote the final line of another of those improbable FA Cup scripts. When Marine were winning trophies, Chris Camden was scoring the goals. Chris works on the production line at Vauxhall. Rowley let him go from the club at Christmas. So returning for the testimonial will be an emotional trip. It really did hurt me. And I went home and saw my wife. I always remember on a Thursday night and I said, I've been finished up and she thought it was joking. She started laughing. And it did hurt me, like, you know what I mean? It did hurt me. But that's football. I, you know, nothing, nothing surprises me now in football. You never think it's going to be you, you know what I mean? You never think it's going to be. I've seen it happen to other players and you never think it's going to happen to you until it does happen to you and it's not a nice... Uh, not a nice feeling at all. Thirty-two, and with a serious ankle injury, John's career is coming to an end. But the Gortries have high hopes for their six-year-old son. But what's your name, youngster? Ben. Ben, nice to meet you, Ben. Today he's the mascot, but his parents hope he'll go all the way and play professionally. <laughs> Penance from Watford and West Ham and Leicester City. Mum's got her work cut out. And um, just basically your ordinary raffle prizes, drink and chockies and gift voucher, etc. This will be the starting line up, lads. Obi in goal, back four, Bainsey, Paul McNally, Procky, myself, Dos, sweeping. Middle two. <laughs> Middle two will be Rollo and Wardy. And up front. Up front. Uh, fast Eddie. Cammy. Rossi when he arrives. Right, find my children now. For the last four or five years at Marine, we, we haven't won anything. And the first time we woke up this morning, I've had that feeling of a big game feeling again. We have a, a big group focus. 
John's not the only Gautry with nerves. The tension's too much for four-year-old Jessica. Rowley's keeping a low profile. Reunions are never easy for managers, particularly if they've dropped half the players returning to play. In 27 years, Rowley's released hundreds of players from the club, but John Gautry has been one of his most loyal servants. John Gautry's gone through a brick wall for Marine Football Club and uh, I'll be indebted to him uh, as a manager uh, for what he's done for me uh, all my life. That might be a little bit strong, but uh, he, he's certainly done his, uh, his bit for me. It's a dream game for John and Chris. Even John's injured ankle is bearing up. Dave's all right, foot took work, was all right. Yeah, running was all right anyway. Didn't get many tackles in. Scored a couple as well. I think he can play for another two, three years yet, but it, remember he's got, uh, he's, he's got a family now, and uh, maybe where I probably didn't, uh, didn't grow up with my family because of my commitment to football, maybe John Way is still a young lad who will want to, uh, who want to uh, look after his family and, and do things with his family. While the players celebrate, it's Lorraine's job to make sure the raffle tickets get sold and the money keeps rolling in. Some of the current team have turned out, but fundraising's still an uphill struggle. First of all, the £50 cash prize. No, first of all, we'll get rid of the Everton ball. Yeah. And, then, and then the £50 cash prize, and then we'll run down this list. Yeah. OK? You've got two minutes. Yeah. You have to wait then. Yeah. You have to wait because people will, will it's want to the go. current team's lucky day. <laughs> Richie Townsend. Say, <laughs> so why is your mum smiling? Why is your mum smiling? Tell you what. I'm so pleased, well done. Well, you take care now. <laughs> Yeah, have a good crack in the dressing room with all yeah. Yeah. Some of the Southport got, lads uh, got what it was like. So, some of them Southport lads were looking looking like they put a uh, few years on them. Well, to, to be to be honest with you, like you're right there. They were probably a little they were a little bit older than our squad. Yeah. But every credit to them. Great. For Chris Camden, the nerves are over. My wife coming over like this, and uh, she says, Your hands are dead clammy, and all this, like, you know what I mean? I said, She goes, you, You're frightened about it. I said, No, I'm not frightened about it. nothing. Like, I just want to enjoy the day, and, and that, like, and me and Rory had a little chat. I thought Rory was going to come before the game, but he, he didn't. He left John to do everything to organise, and afterwards we had a chat. Like, no axe to grind with Rory Howard. I've got no axe whatsoever to grind, to, 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 uh, to grind with uh, Rory Howard. It's all water under the bridge, as far as I'm concerned. Like. <laughs> then, oh, then, then. I get a union in The lads that haven't shown up today don't know what non-league football and being part of the part of the team is all about, and that is where we're going wrong. Can't help feeling that the end is nigh. I 
they've not got an awful lot more to offer to many football clubs, to be honest with you. When the time comes, nobody needs to tell me you passed it. I'll, I'll hang my boots up before that day. Next week, on the beat with Marine centre back, and there's a shock announcement at Rossard Park. Barry was nearly crying, he was, um, he couldn't believe it, he just kept thinking I was winding him up. Players in the Unibon Premier League can earn several hundred pounds a week, but nearly all have full-time jobs outside football. Marine's team is made up of accountants, roofers, postmen, and in the case of defender Mark Schofield, policemen. I've been very, very fortunate in this job. I seem to land on my feet straight away, and a lot of my colleagues will say that as well. You seem to fall on your feet, Mark. Why? They say I'm in some the lodge, but it's not the case whatsoever, <laughs> joking apart. I'm, but when I first come to Hindley, I worked in the cars for a couple of years and then an opportunity came up for me to come onto an area which was the town centre area. So I applied for it and managed to get it with the blessings of the superintendent at the time, Brian Lee, smashing fella. And he said to me, Mark, he said, he said, as long as you put the work in, there won't be a problem. He said, but it'll help with your football, won't it? Yeah, so that was nice. This lady here and uh, the lady she's going to get in. They're in charge of most of the girls along here, and uh, they know exactly what's going on with regards to shoplifters. Anybody comes in and they clock them straight away. So I come in every now and again and said, you know, such and such of things being going on. They give me a car registration number so then I can put the intelligence them into our system about what's going on, but these two are really, really, as you say, on the ball with regards to uh, who comes in here. Where's your mate? Uh, she's... Uh... Right. Is, uh, is, is Frankie? He's not in as well, is he? The manager, com the manager comes to me quite often as well, asking bits of advice about different things. Um, it's a good opportunity for me to like find out who's doing what. Any shot lifters? Is she about Maureen? Yes, she's in the back. What's Is anything uh, going on? No, it's been okay today. No, nothing at all. I think we've been a bit lucky lately because it's been a bit quiet, hasn't it? A lot of the time, a lot of the people that are coming in here are from the council estate, uh, where a lot of the, well, some of the criminals are. There's not a great number, but they normally come in here for some reason. Obviously, it's a lot cheaper. Marine stand-in captain Keith Proctor is an accountant. It's getting hard for him to find time for his family. Next Monday night, I'm at home. Tuesday night, we're playing Runcorn. Wednesday, I'm going down south. I come back late Friday night. Then Saturday, I've got the game. Saturday night, I'm out at the meal. Should we be like reading by the time I get back? I'm coming, 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 I'm coming. Just showing the presence. The shopkeepers like to see the you know myself about reassures them. We've had little bits of crime about at the moment with regards to shoplifters, etc. So let them see me. Also, try and keep the, uh, the traffic flowing on the town centre as well, because we do get quite a few people who uh, do park illegally. A lot of the time, if they're parking up to load, unload, no problem. That is a problem, that stray dog there. We don't want any accidents. We'll just wait and see, see where it goes first. It nearly got knocked over. In fact, I think that dog is just around the corner. So hopefully it's going to be OK. The thing that I like to do mostly is to basically go onto the town centre, go into different places, schools, etc., and just to show them that I'm here. And basically, if they need any help, I'm here for them, basically. 
Keith's a regular at Oral Park Baptist Church in Bootle. Today he's leading the service. Well, as you know, this morning we've got a service which has got a bit more of a sporting emphasis. So what I'm looking for, whilst we're just lowering these couple of blinds here and shutting that one for a minute, I'm looking for a couple of volunteers who are maybe a little bit more athletic. Young lads? Any girls? Anybody ever heard of the triple jump? No. Have you? What do you do for the triple jump? You're not skipping the jump. Do you want to come and have a go? Come ahead. Right. Mind the baby, right? And mind my daughter, all right? When you get to that chair, I want you to see if you can hop, skip, and a jump and see how far you can get. You ready? Mind the babies. Get Jill, come on, dear. Right, you ready? Go ahead, when you're ready. Hop, skip, and a jump. Hey, not bad. Not bad. Anybody reckon they can beat that? No? Well done, you're the champion. Jonathan Edwards, right. He can hop, skip, and a jump into the road. It's true, that, actually. We're going to hear a little bit more about his Christian faith now, anyway. When I said move it, I meant move it, completely move it. Yeah. Do you know it's a one-way street, this? Yeah. So what are you reversing for the one-way street for? I mean, really speaking, I should give you a fixed penalty. Yeah. Not for the parking, but for the unnecessary for reversing. reversing. You know, we're talking for one-way street. All right, well, on this occasion, I'll let you off. All right. Pack at the back. All right, you'll do that in future then. Belty. He's backed up under, he just backed up outside here on WL lines. Uh, I tried to give a little bit, particularly being a community policeman. I normally wait for a vehicle, but it's parked illegally. I wait for so much time and then consider possibly giving him a ticket. On that occasion, though, he's backed up on WL lines. Uh, said he's nipping to the speed bank, but if everybody said that, he'd be so congested. And there's a car park at the back. Now, because he's just he's just arrived, I didn't book him, but I spoke to him again because he just reversed back up a one-way street. People do react that way sometimes. When a police officer comes to them, they seem to panic or do something they shouldn't have done. They don't think straight. So that was his explanation as to doing that, and he suddenly realised, oh yeah, sorry, it was a one-way street. So I've uh, just warned him. Can God still show his people? Extraordinary things can't say to you that he does. Keith always likes to squeeze a bit of football into his sermons. To look at, some of you will go, yes. Some of you will go, no. It's round, it's leather on the outside, inner tube, rubber inner tube on the inside, 28, 32 panels, depending on whichever size it is. Also known as a bag of wind. So what's the object? A football. And it's finding it increasingly difficult to fit the, um, the commitments in, really. We train twice a week and uh, every Saturday for 10 months of the year. And when I can work late a couple of nights, I don't see my family, I don't see Jill, I don't see the baby. And uh, I don't really think that's fair. So, Roly um, spoke to me about next season with the possibility of coming back next season. So I told him that uh, I was thinking of packing it in at the end of this year. And he fully understands the reason why. Uh, at the end of the day, he's always said that the job and the family should always come before football. And certain times, the family was coming third in the list, uh, which isn't really good, it's not acceptable. So I've told him I'm unpacking at the end of the year. Marine's ground is getting a £200,000 revamp. It's the result of a football trust grant and a lot of work fundraising. Welcome to Marine Trolls. First time. Yeah, yeah. We've got, uh, we've got to come through. We've got to all the members of the ground committee here yeah. um, to uh, meet you. And uh, you've got the contract. Yeah, indeed. Well, well done, well done. Today, the committee uh, are signing contracts with the developers. Now just have a little chat and we'll have a walk around the, uh, around the ground. It's a big day for the club. Come on through. It, it, it has taken us three years from when we first of all started talks with Leach. Mm. Uh, and this is a very exciting day for us, really. It's smashing. Witness. Yes, thank you very much. Pen. Thank you. There we go. That's it. Thank you very much. Okay, nice. That's magnificent, Charles. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> Fortunately, touch wood, I've never, never been beaten up. I've been involved in a. I've been butted in the face once and. A couple of uh, punches, 
And that, in fact, somebody tried to actually stab me with a screwdriver once upon a time. There was an, an electrical, electrical shop up the road. This lad runs out, dressed in black, balaclava on, with, a, with a, his uh, kit bag, you know, for burgling. So straight away, like, I chase after him. He drops his stuff and pulls out this, uh, I thought it was a knife at first, but pulls out the big screwdriver and he comes running at me, trying, trying to uh, stab me. So uh, anyway, backed off, backed off. And uh, I just stayed with him all the time, but keeping a safe distance and ended up chasing him across over the fields over, over in that direction. And eventually he gave up and uh, I arrested him for uh, burglary, attempt burglary, because he tried to knock the back wall in with a sledgehammer and uh, assault with intent to resist arrest. But uh, unfortunately, he didn't really get much at court. He got two years probation, which I was a bit disappointed about at that time. Building a new stand and terracing means saying goodbye to a lot of marine history. All of it's coming down, yeah. yeah. That was built by a member uh, about five years ago, a member in the 70s at the time. <laughs> so uh, it's sad to see it go, really. Ellis's stand. We've got no toilet facilities on the ground at all at the moment, uh, apart from the uh, standing only for the gents. Right then, who's going to cook me a meal? Not me. Who's cooking me a meal? Hey? It's like stops and starts. You can be really, really busy, uh, but then you can have a bit of a, a barren spell when not a lot's going on. You're not going to eat all that, are you? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hiya. You all right? I'm bad, you? I'm not so bad, thank you. So what have you been having? I'm in toast, thank you. I say, yeah. So have you anything to tell me, then? Yeah, yeah. Anything going on? No? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nice one. Are <laughs> 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 you going to shake me hand or not? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Kathy. Mark's been at Marine for two seasons, the final stage in a long career in non-league football. Well, thanks for letting me in on your cooking secrets, and I'm going to get going now. Yeah, I, I, I'm fortunate to be doing this job. Anything else, I probably would have struggled, to be quite honest. Grace, smashing. Thanks very much, Charles. Thanks to you. Look forward to a great, great job being done. The contract is signed, but the nerves are just beginning. The building work will be only in the daytime. There will be no weekend working and no evening working, so disruption will be kept to a minimum. Fingers crossed. <laughs> off at Wigan Athletic. I was uh, from a schoolboy from 14. When I was 16, I signed apprentice forms two years, and then I had two years as a professional, up to about the age of 19, 20, and then got a bit disillusioned and decided to leave. And then uh, I was offered terms at Horwich RMI, who are now Lee RMI, and they uh, give me a job. We sided me over for like 18 months, two years, and then uh, I decided to apply for the police and managed to get in. And it, I've got to say, it's the best move I've ever made. An unidentified object has been found at the day centre. Okay, what, what's happened? We found this in our century garden. Yeah. There was a large bottle of pop water, or bottle of yeah. water here. Right. Give us, uh, some kind of drugs. That, I don't know. Right, whereabouts is the garden? It's not the same. It's, it's, a, right. it's an enclosed compound. And right. Um, it's an the fence. Right. Um, and you, you found it yourself, have you? Uh, no one is allowed to work to go. It's one of our neighbours. Right. Okay, you know what it is, don't you? Lovely. Yeah, I have been told it's a bomb, maybe. Yeah. There was a large bottle of pop water, or a bottle yeah. of water here, which we just bombed Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. Know. yeah. You're basically right. Right, well, well, I'll have a quick look at it, yeah. Mustn't jump to conclusions, but the partaking of soft drugs may be involved. That was the ashtray as well. The club's ground improvements are the biggest change to Rosset Park in over 70 years, 
and the committee are worried about upsetting the neighbours. Dave Wotherspoon arrived at Marine in a pram with his father. Today he's delivering newsletters about the building work. I know what postmen have to contend with now. Ow! Take your finger off that if you're not careful. <laughs> right. <coughs> Maurice Broderick and Peter Hughes are the two committee members in charge of sponsorship. Yeah, we haven't tried them, have we? The money they raise is essential to the club's survival. Today, they're in Crosby Town Centre. Nice to see you again anyway. You? You? Um, what it is, I wrote to um, Mike Dixon. Yes, yes. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh -huh. concerning a ground advertising board. Yes. Now, at Marine. At Marine, yes. 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 Now, he did say he'd get back to me. Um, whether he was interested or not. Yes. Now, I was just coming in today to see whether you made any progress on it, if, if you know. Uh, well, I have had a conversation with Mike about it, um, mm. and as far as I'm aware, yeah, he's all for it. Good. Um, like anything, he's the, the chap at the end of the day who makes the final decision on that. So, uh, yeah, uh, I don't see it being a problem, to be fair. Right. Especially being local, obviously, it's a oh. Right. Okay, thanks. No, no okay. Problem. Okay. Yeah, we'll see, see you again. Thanks for your help. Pleasure. Be in touch. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Take Thanks. care. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye now. You've just got to keep pushing all the time. You know, not not sort of leave it because if you leave it, they'll forget. I know it's in the forefront of our minds, but it's not in the forefront of of theirs. So the dealerships have a budget for sponsorship, so well worth contact. People have got these fancy uh, things on the inside now. To... Right. Marie moved to uh, this ground in 1901, and part of Rosset Road was in fact here. It was from Rosset Road that Marine took the name Rosset Park. Crossender at the end was built in about 1938. It was built on the pitch that uh, the second team used. So they're relatively new, but these. It wasn't fully built up uh, this side, but these houses have been here almost as long as Marine. How's things, John? Uh, yeah. yeah, nice to see you again. It's a while since you've been uh, knocking at the door. <laughs> well, you didn't think we were going to leave you alone, did you? I know it's, it's early yet, but uh, what we're trying to do is get into place uh, prospective match sponsors for next season. Basically, if we sponsor a match, we can justify the cost by just perhaps pulling a, a, a weekly advert out of the newspaper. They all do full-time jobs, and yet they're doing more than a full-time job running around the district. B-Town's quite a reputation in the village. Everyone hides from him because he wants more money, but people don't do it, nothing's going to happen for them, so um, we'll support them any way we can. What we're looking for is for next season, because although it's only March now, we're trying to get sponsors in place for next season already, so we can have a little bit of time off during the summer to enjoy ourselves. Good morning. Can I give you those from uh, Marine Football Club? Oh, right. You don't live here. No, you're just doing the uh, garden. OK, I'll stick them through the letterbox. Right. OK, where was I up to? Where was I? I'll work logically and then I know where I am. Marine are at home. The ground redevelopment will include toilets, but today's opponents have found a temporary solution. News of Keith's retirement is the only cloud on a sunny day. Gossard. He's one of the nicest players we have. It is disappointing. He's been here about like, 10 years or so. Um, he's uh, one of our favourite players. He's our favourite player, and uh, yes, yeah, disappointing. He's retiring at the end of the season, other commitments and that. It's a shame he's only about 28, he could get a few more years left in him. I can yes, understand. Disappointed. It's understandable, but he's just without a, a defence now. <laughs> We've got no defence. Marine's opponents are Chorley, who've got their own relegation worries. It's a 
dynamic process. The players come and go, and it's something you have to accept and you have to live with. It's just here you quite get quite close to some of the players. Keith's one of those who's always very approachable and mixes very well. Um, John Gortry, I mean, his days must be numbered. I think he's going to give us another season, perhaps. Um, again, he'll be very sadly missed. And they're probably the last two links with the championship teams. But you have to accept this. One nil to Marine. When your pitch is surrounded by houses, you need to get on with your neighbours, particularly if you want your balls back. I mean, sometimes I bang against the net, but um, I guess I get a lot of balls over in the course of a week, in the course of a season. Oh, yes. It's just the back netting that's taking a punishing today. I'm not a, I'm not a football fan. Snooker's my game, and golf. One all. Quite a few people have had windows broken, but Marine are very, very obliging. And if that happens, um, they send the glazers in. The teams are very, very nice. There's never any arguments on the pitch or anything like that. They're, they're extremely uh, well behaved, you know, for the, um, uh, what do they call it? The um, Unibond League. The Unibond, yes. Adriano Rigolioso, Shelley as is known at Rossa Park, gives Marine the lead. A rare chance for celebrations. For Keith's wife, Jill, it's a victory tinged with sadness. It feels quite emotional, really. You know, obviously it's been a big part of his life, and but I think he's come to the point now where he's, he feels ready to finish. It's nice that he's finishing when he's been playing well. But as I say, I mean, I'm sure he'll be coming back and helping out in some form. He won't just stop coming to Marie. He'll still be around. Do you want to know when I was at my lowest? When I said, what a job you have part-time, is Keith uh, is his own man, isn't he? He's done the captain's job since John's gone out the side. <laughs> Tremendous. 4-1, people say it flattered us or whatever. Never mind. It. When we pick the paper up in the morning, it'll be Marine 4, Charlie 1. And uh, that's, that's taken a lot of pressure off the club. Overall, uh, I might have a few drinks tonight. Tremendous. Next week on Marine Lives, the men in black are back. Yeah, 2 0. That had to be an offside as well. I mean, you were offside. Oh, right? You were offside. Yeah. Well, I couldn't see from where I was. I had a good view of it. Yeah, I had a good view of it. You were offside. And there's a new away kit for the Mariners. <laughs> Guy to go with it, eh? Merseyside's Marine AFC are at home to local Unibond league rivals Roncorn. The car park is totally chock a block. There's no room left for anyone whatsoever. Um, luckily, one's coming out now, but we're going to be in the same situation in about 10 minutes' time because the directors from Roncorn have just turned up and there's no parking facility. So they're not impressed, so I've had to double park them over there. Um, one of them has just made comments about us going to them next season, we're going to get the same treatment. What can you expect? You should pull a finger out and get things sorted. 
the club spending two hundred thousand pounds on a new stand but the committee are having problems with their vip lounge what i'm trying to say to you is from day one from the first of august are we are we going to have a facility there to, to, to service these people we're just not going to have it the very best we're going to we're going to have a shell we can't have we can't have sponsors go into a shell with brick walls and concrete on the floor you all sound a bit negative we've got a six-week window to put facility in there right and if we don't then my bet is that we'll have no facility all season and we'll lose out on an opportunity to launch a vip club and to put some bar sales under the yeah stand. yeah but we've got to start taking them into a you know, a, a wall that's got no paint on it and the floor not properly made and no heat. Uh, I mean, that's not what we want, is it? This is the only girl who can get special treatments on this car park. Could you rephrase that, please? Over on the right hand side behind the blue fiesta, please. Mark Stewart has been in charge of security <laughs> for eight years. I'll tell you what, that Kevin off airline thinks he's got a fun job. I can have a fun sort of job at times as well. My missus will kill me. People say the most innocent things, but they can be uh, totally misquoted, can't they? Where do you want me? <laughs> if the message doesn't get through to the slimming club, we're inundated with the, the girls who want to go slimming, or weight watching, as they call it and um, we've had many catastrophe when we've caught i've come in about quarter past six they've started early and there's been like 12 girls already in here and then trying to get them out well you know women it's easier nailing blancmange to a, ch a ceiling I tell you deep heat and massage oil are at the heart of marine's warm-up routine the club's clear of relegation but tonight's a local derby and there's more than just points at stake yeah there's a slimmer Do you want to come in and turn round, or do you want me to reverse you back out? You've got no chance, we're absolutely chocker. Absolutely chocker block. I'll let you come in and turn round. There's no room in the car park, but the turnstiles aren't exactly spinning. You ready? Are you ready? Everybody, come on. Come on, ready, boys? Redevelopment means money's tight, and there's been no cash to strengthen the squad. This season we've finished we've finished the lowest position in the league since 1955. That's 40 years ago. Chairman Tom Culshaw should know. He's been at the club since the 1940s. The bar sales uh, will be affected, the sponsorship will be affected, uh, every damn thing, the fundraising will be affected, programme sales, you go, you go on and on with it. And I'm not advocating that you go absolutely mad, um, but my feeling is that we're on this bit of a slippery slope at the moment, that good players will not come to Marine because we're not a very good team. It's got to be a finely tuned balancing act between the level of money that we invest in the team and being able to achieve a surplus that will fund and repay the debt that, that we're now entering into. And if we can't service it, then not only will we uh, drop down the league, but we'll, we'll, we'll uh, drop out of existence. Events on the pitch are taking an all too familiar course. Marines soon find themselves a goal down. Well, it's a bit unfair for me to say anything because I won't be here next season. But I, I think common sense just indicates you've got to increase the, the playing wages. Right the way through the club, the motivation will fall away if we don't get more success on the field. I mean, it is a gamble whether you back the right horse, mm. but we've had, it, for what, yeah. whatever reason, um, none of the horses that we've backed are, you know, are delivering the milk now, aren't they, really? Yeah, it was yeah. aspirational, wasn't Half-time. Manager Rowley Howard is feeling the strain. Yeah, there's no shout at all. No nothing. 
Have I got to ask you to fucking work hard every game? Have I got to ple plead with you to fucking show enthusiasm? Because if that's it, I ain't fucking going anywhere, boys. I ain't fucking going anywhere. If anybody goes, it'll be you fucking fellas that go, not me. I ain't sitting in the dressing room pleading for enthusiasm and fucking will to win. I ain't doing that at all. And that's in a pre-season friendly or anything at all. Never mind what you did, if you was at league clubs or wherever you was. I don't care what you did there, I'm bothered what you do here. And, I, and I, this, this half, whether we win, lose or draw, I don't want anything but 150%. I asked for that before and got maybe 60. Come on lads, let's turn it down. We have had a few bad results that we shouldn't have had. But well, I'm sure we're going to come back up next season. Hopefully things will change for us. But not tonight, they're not. Runcorn steal another easy goal. It's the hardest season in 27 years for Marines veteran manager, Rolly Hammer. The club's defence has been leaking goals all season. Humiliating 4 1 defeat. No good for me, boys. Very, very disappointed. I'll tell you what, just come in on Saturday and go out and play the fucking game. And leave it with me in the summer. And I hope you've got a fucking job next year. That is fucking <coughs> disgraceful, boys. Supporters Club have organised a fundraising quiz night, but they're having a few technical problems. That's it, Jackie. And it's good clearance. That's what it is, you know. Do you know what's wrong with it? Dust on me, all the things. I'll tell you what's wrong with it. What did you say? It's changed. It's changed. It's changed. It's changed. Marine's part time bouncer, Jackie, is helping committee member Steve Rawsthorn to ensure a trouble free evening. One, two, one, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. You, you two are going in, yeah? No, I'll keep one. 50 pence each. 50 pence. Oi! Jackie! It's 50, 50 pence each and you get a free raffle ticket. You should still come through one speaker, John. That's what it is, speakers. They're not the speakers. We'll put up with that for tonight. John, you know that switch where it said hall and uh, lounge? Anything wrong with that? Lynn, you can find the IPA for you, though. One, two, one, two. <laughs> we know the tapes work anyway. Thanks very much, Lynn. They normally start about quarter past nine, it's twenty past now. Unfortunately, a few people are missing tonight. I don't know why, we had about 60 in the room last week. We've got nearly 40 now. What we do, we have 10 questions, 10 picture questions in the first round. Have you, have you been before? What you do, you write the answers one to 10 on the pictures. 50 pence each it is, and then 10 general knowledge. How many is that for? Just, just one. Are you joining in, yeah? And I'm not. Then we have a break and we have the raffle. Then the second half, we have ten general knowledge and ten music questions. Uh, then after that, we pay out the winner after we've marked all the papers. And then we have play our cards right. Do you want me to do it for you? Left hand lock down. I'll just take it back another couple of inches. Left hand lock and then back up a bit more. The slimmers have been squeezed out. Now it's the turn of the opposition directors to enjoy the pleasure of Mark's guiding Go hands in the car park. OK. Come over on your right hand lock. The chance of reduce the road tax by £55 to £95. It was £155. You said post-budget. You said post-budget. The answer's 100 It's down to the quizmaster to settle the matter. Go over on your right hand locker, touch, that's it. Now come straight back as you are. Left hand lock down now. Go on, go on, you're all right. Go on, you're all right. Never a man to admit defeat. Steve's in the car park to settle the road no tax question once and for all. Go 
Well, I'll stay back as you are. Stay back. With Marine, it's a small club and you're all like a family and everyone's so friendly and everyone gets on so well together. Uh, if you're a supporter of a big club like Liverpool or Everton, you're just one of a number, aren't you? £150. It is, you're right for it. It's staying at £150, isn't it? It's always very laid back, we always have a good laugh, you know, it's, it's not meant to be too serious. <laughs> Apologies about the microphone, because there's only one speaker working, apparently. Just a couple of things to tell you about quickly before we crack on. This Friday night is the Irish night. Most of my social time's taken up with Marine, really, so I don't really do a lot socially apart from what I do with Marine. With the ground development work that's been going on, we've obviously got to try and make monies available for new players, because if we don't, then we're going to end up getting relegated. Right, get my jacket. My phone, I'm just about done. I've already done my kit. I always do my kit the night before as a rule. No, no, it's, uh, it's sorted. Rather Nigel chase, Bannister is a Unibond League referee. Supply a fisherman's friend, keeps you going. Makes you breathe more easily. Unibond handbook. Mobile phone. So I'll just turn my lights off. Number two, Mark Nolte. <laughs> oh, come on, lad. Drop them <laughs> It's Marine's last away trip of the season, and there's a traditional change of away strip. Come on, lad. Yeah! <laughs> 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 I've got standards. They cost, more than, they cost more than the five. And the standards and the reputations of the golf. Absolutely right. There's my five, please. Teddy Burns. Oh, money well spent. Oh, look at him. <laughs> Today, Nigel's travelling with his linesman. I've always wanted to go to this club, just because the name Rackham is down there. Well, I mean, that's it. They're a famous, well-established club, though, aren't they, you yeah. see? Because, like you say, um, so where are you sat at, Ackington Stanley? And it's, oh, are they? Exactly. Yeah. You know, they're from, from Milk, have they? I mean, they, if they've got all of Ireland, they'll show that out there. <laughs> Fucking happy days with that out there. They're pissing themselves. They and Ross drinking that milk. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> you see, if you think about it, them and Emily have done very well for the Unibond League, anyway, yeah. aren't they? You know. Yeah. Go on, Johnny, lad. Tremendous, lads. <laughs> 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 like a bear to standing in rolling. Roll over. It's been a roll over. Just get 500 quid on the lottery. Just paid for the new stand. The match hasn't started, but Nigel's already handing out the red cards. Isn't it weather over in Arlington Woods? Well, lovely at our house. It's like this this morning. It's been over the guest at our house all fucking morning. I'm away from football. I'm a, I'm a transport manager for a small haulage company. But besides running 10, 11 vehicles, we actually uh, buy and sell second-hand pallets. Be careful that fucking pallet come off here. Look at that, son. Yeah, I know. <laughs> if he sets off with your bollocks. he get fucking hammered for that if that fell off. Yeah. I'm glad he's not with my fucking driver. Excuse me, can you tell me the football ground is Accrington's football ground? I know we're not far away. I don't know, to be honest. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Alright. <laughs> we'll go to the end of here. Yeah. There's a little roundabout. Turn right, down yeah. to the bottom. Go round to the left, there's some traffic lights. 
not into the highway, up that oh, hill no, there. Right. When you get to the top of there, that's Wally Road. Turn left there. Pull that right, right called Crown. OK, that's Crown's fine. Man, that. Cheers, Thanks. all that. Cheers. All right, let's, get, let's go, then. Fucking, we wanted to go, <laughs> mate. Just in case the big round about, we'll be all right, you silly <laughs> Accrington Stanley, one of football's legendary names. This season hasn't been one of their best. Relegation to the Unibond League First Division is now a formality. And at the moment, they're still missing a referee and a linesman. Fucking hell, Vinny, where the fuck is he? That's our son from that one. Where, lads? That's who's from the place, man. Fucking not happy. I haven't had a twinge like that in years. Oh, the socks on. Yeah, yeah. This is it. Oh, we're here. Spot on. Accrington Stanley. Who are they? Exactly. I need to find a parking bay. I don't know how to wreck them up somewhere. Just roll them down, then. It's a pity this camera hasn't got a smell of thon on it. I'll tell you this. one. Oh, disgusting. Accrington Stanley are struggling. They're down there. I don't know if they consider themselves as goomed. Uh, Marine are now safe. It's a bit like the Premiership now. There's certain teams that are down there and they're battling for every point. And it might be the same today. I hope it's the same today. I hope it's a good out of the game. That's what I want. Keep your toes. Get up, get up, get up. Let us go out, as Crocky said, and have a good start. Let us dictate it from the word go. Okay, come on, everybody. We're ready, boys, eh? Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's go, boys, eh? Come on. Come on. Captain's place. Make sure he's coming in now, not bombing off the tree. Chris! Which way right. are you playing? Stay as we are. Stay as you are. Okay, okay. you're right. kicking the rest. All the best, mate. All the best. Okay. All the best. All the best. Have a good one. Yeah. Take it easy. All right, then. Stay as we are. Stay as we are. Stay as we are. You just enjoy it. I don't know what it is. It's just a bug that you get in the system. Get a game out of the way and you cannot wait while your next game comes along. You cannot wait. You get a lot of stick from most of your decisions. I bet say the worst thing about it being a line is you can't run away from it. I don't care who win or loses. To me, it's just red versus blue. Because there's less people, you tend to hear it. It's just part of the game. Sometimes you chuckle to yourself with some of the comments that they make. Shut your face, you As far as I'm concerned, you've got to have a sense of humour with them. Because if they give you some, some stick, you can give them some back. Sometimes you have to shout him and gain honour to him as you're on the run. You know, hey, number four, pack that in next time it's a straight yellow. So you've got to be strict with them. I've told you now, you've no excuse, have you? I, all right, you know. and so you've got to tell them where, where they stand with you, but also you can have a joke with them as well. He's a responsive walk! Unsurprisingly, Accrington scored first. If you're following a team, you want everything in your team's favour. Your, fa your team can do no wrong. No opposition is the one that's always at fault. And you perish from the ball! Come on, Beasy Lamb! Again! Again! They also score the second. Soon back in the game. Oh, block it, John! A rare Barry Macmillan goal for the Mariners. Two all. And it's all a bit much for the Accrington bench. With minutes to go, the tension builds on and off the pitch. Get 
my opinion is and my theory is I give what I see and I give it with me heart what I see and that's all I can do. Can't do anything else. He's acting. He's got an Oscar. Don't be stupid. What? He's acting. They've been touching. Another minor injury for Adriano Regolioso. Accrington regained the lead with only minutes left to play. A win for Accrington, but it's not enough to beat relegation. Difficult game, difficult game, and uh, Accrington Stanley were up for it, and it turned into a bit of a cup final. Good game to be involved in, but I could feel the tension as the game went on. For once, words fail Rowley Howard. Tomorrow I'm taking my missus to the seaside and then a little lad and then Monday night I've got another Unibon game, Emily versus Hyde. Saturday I'm at Darlington on the line. It's a good standard of football. Look, uh, enjoy it. Throw off. In Marine Lives next week, Captain John Gortry goes under the knife and demolition work starts at Russell Park. the last Saturday of the season at College Road, but Marine's £200,000 ground development project is overshadowing events on the pitch. The yes, Marine Football Club lie in a mid-table position in the Unibond League Premier Division, as this is their last game of the season. It's too late After today, the Mariners' home of 70 years will never look the same again. The team has made enormous strides through the football pyramid since Ronnie Howard took over in 1972. The club itself has also grown in stature within the community. And finally, after many years of trying, we are able to get the stadium that reflects the all-round progress. Come on, boys, let's give it 100% today. Ready? Winnie, come on. Come on, Daddy. Come on. Let's go, Clarky. Clarky. Come on. But this afternoon's visit of Geisley is one of huge significance for everybody connected with the club. Once the referee blows the final whistle at a quarter to five, things will never quite be the same again. And hopefully it'll be a lot better. And uh, a day where the ground will never be as you see it now, it'll be entirely different. Let's not forget though, there's a football match here today, and one that could well have a massive bearing on the outcome of the Unibon Premier Division title. Listen! If you fucking rate me, or this club, or that fella stood there, right, I want you to show us how you rate us, right? Because another performance like that, all right, and I don't know what you are. Hey, come on, I won't get responsible for me actions. Now we can't come on. Come on. So, for a variety of reasons, this is a significant fixture. It's Marine versus Geisley on a day that brings the curtain down on 70 years of local sporting history. This is Darren Griffiths for Merseyside Sport at College Road.
And I'd like to thank you all on behalf of the club for supporting the team being club throughout the season. I won't spend it. <laughs> the building works, the culmination of years of hard fundraising by Marine supporters and committee. The, the committee, the, the, the supporters, the club, it's going to be a, a good, nice little compact ground with the new development that's going on. And uh, we, we, can, we can go from here. On the pitch, the season's been a disaster. It's manager Rowley Howard's worst record in 27 years. They'll be noisy enough. They, they'll do well. We've just got to survive maybe this season and then we, we can strike forward and go again. When I do eventually hang my boots up, as it were, I would just like to leave the club in a good position and I'll work night and day to do that. It's also the press box's last game. Despite years of DIY repairs, it's finally been condemned as unsafe by the local council. Today's visitors are a strong side. They've already beaten Marine once this season. But today, there's real optimism at College Road. I don't expect to win the league next year. If we can show improvement, if we can maybe win a domestic cup, just bring some silverware to the, to the club again, that would, be, that would be a big lift. But I know that it's possible, uh, and uh, it'll be made to work. <laughs> Nil-nil at half-time. Fifteen minutes for the fans to stock up on programmes and millennium clocks in the marine shop. We like to think we're the best stock shop in this league. We've got badges, scarves, mugs, pens, pencils, key rings, and the Rowley Howard signed chamois leather. But we all know he's also a window cleaner. We've actually had some people buying them as well. You half got me enthusiasm back for your application alone. But we can do better. We can do better. But it's the Yorkshire side that breaks the deadlock. Changes in safety regulations have forced the club into redevelopment. It's meant a lot of hard work for committee members like Bruce Joyner. The Football League have rather reacted to Hillsborough and bringing the complications down to clubs at this level. It's ridiculous in my opinion. We've had a hard time financially. Rowley has been very, very patient with the lack of funds for players, but he's done very well. We've escaped relegation and by what I've seen this season, we've got a lot of young players which have quite a future and it all goes well for next year. Marine pull one back through John Morgan. Hey, that Morgan. <laughs> and I've been castigating him all match for being lazy. Okay. A fitting goal to say goodbye to the old stands. Well done, Mike. The match ends one all. For Marine, it's as good as a win. Now today, in my opinion, 
you've got that result because you work hard. If you can work like that throughout the season, if you work like that for each other, there's no danger. And all I've got to say today is proud of you again. Well done, lads. Well done, boys. Hey, we finish on a good note anyway. Yeah, well done, lads. Yeah. Well, well done. Well, well done, boys. Could have won it. It's not just the end of the season for superfan Barry Lenton. He's saying goodbye to a second home. I spent a thousand games working out last night, a thousand games watching Marine from the shed. So it's a part of my, of my own history and uh, I'm going to miss it, I think. I think I've got a couple of outstanding memories. The, the Probably the two most outstanding ones for me I won't beat Halifax 4-1 because my dad had just started to come to Marini's when my mother became ill and um, she had Alzheimer's disease, she died a few months ago and it was the first time I think I'd hooked my dad when we scored the third goal against Halifax, it was the first time I'd hooked my dad for about 30 years so that was a, and that was a, a great match as well so that was an outstanding uh, memory for me. It's been a great afternoon and we gave the shed a good send-off, I understand a good send-off. Uh, big crowd here today, uh, a little bit sad now. Yeah. There's a wicked old thing, isn't it, but uh, it's home. <laughs> Marine's captain, John Gautry has been out of the side with an ankle injury all season. He needs a private operation if he's going to play again. Right, I want you to try and score. But at 32, the club's not so sure he's a good investment. I can't get an answer either way from anybody at the moment as to sort of how much it's going to cost, where the funding's going to come from. And, and why they're sort of stalling. I know they're coming up with the excuses about the ground improvement, etc., and needing money in the bank to get the grants, etc. And that side of it I can understand. But at the same time, um, this season's finished, we're into a pre season, and then next season starts in three months, July, the training. And if things aren't sort of um, hurried, hurrying up, I'm not even going to be fit for the start of next season. It's one of the hardest decisions the committee have to make. £2,000 is a lot of money for a club with an average gait of 300. You know, I think, you know, John Gautry sums up what Marine's all about, but the question is, can we afford it? Gautry is in a region of 31, 32 years of age. He's probably got another one or two seasons left in him. I haven't said to him, what are you prepared to pay for, or anything like that. Um, knowing John Gautry, probably nothing. I'd like to think that I've still got I'm still capable of doing a job at non-league football and I'd like to still think that I could do a job for Marine Football Club but at the same time I need to see a bit of commitment on their behalf as well. I mean I feel that I've given them 14 years of, of loyal service, never once demanded or asked for anything out of the ordinary. I've, all, I've always been as honest as I could with them and likewise I've, I've had that sort of response in the, in the past but it's times like now where um, you, you, you tend to think that maybe now's the time where you're calling your favours, so to speak. And I, ju I just feel a little bit let down at the moment. Very disappointed. Are we going to do it for him, or are we not going to do it for him? He's got to decide first. Well, I mean, I would always want to do what's best for uh, you know somebody who's given the club uh, a lot of his time and a lot of uh, <coughs> you know, brought us a lot of pleasure and glory, really. The simple answer is we can't afford it. We all know that. People outside will sympathise with him. And we'll be the bad boys, but OK. <laughs> That's what it's, the opening remark was. We, I mean, sometimes you've got to be bad boys. And you can always be popular and do the right thing. OK. John's not the only mariner with injury problems. Ah. Oh. Yeah, bending it that way is the worst. Barry's recovering from a near-fatal car crash, which kept him away from College Road for much of the season. That's, that's okay. <laughs> There's an almighty crunch. 
um, I thought I was going to die because of the speed with which he was going. And then immediately after the impact, I was spitting out glass, and was shouting for help. I could see there was smoke coming from the engine. Called cuneiform, but okay. ah, it's, it's, all right. it's on the that top. Is, yeah. That is a bit tender, so yeah. that won't matter. When is I was in terrible pain from the waist down. Uh, the firefighters came. They eventually got me out. They had to cut my clothes off me, and this is I was in enough pain as it was, but without getting my marine sweatshirt cut from me, that, that's that's all I got left on my marine sweatshirt, which is really sad because it doubled the pain in some ways, you know. The committee has finally made up its mind and John's able to go into hospital for the operation. He's taking his biggest fans with him. The upshot of it is the club, the club have said they're going to go halves. <clears throat> but I've got a fan from the other half, whether it's through sponsorship or donations. Either way, whatever I can raise will come off my side of the bill. I think the kids are more nervous than sort of Lorraine and I, they're sort of, oh, daddy, crying and things like that, but that's just children, that's the way they're going to react. Lorraine's coming through childbirth three times, so she'll be laughing and saying, no, it's nothing compared to what I've done, but she's probably right, but yeah, they're all behind me, and it's a different, it's sort of new for them, hospital and daddy being in hospital, but just want it done, done with now, get it over and done with and get back, back playing football, it's gone on too long. If there's a big piece that's attached to it and there's an important bit of ligament with it, then I'll have to try and reattach it to the main bone and hold it with a, a screw or wire or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, either way, you'll be in a plastic cast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So if I could ask you to sign your consent form. How long is Daddy going to be in this for? About 45 minutes. Okay, if you'd like to read that, I've listed the operation as exploration medial aspects of right ankle. That's me medial just means the inner aspect of yeah. the ankle. <laughs> Create excision, prefixation of burning fragments, so yeah. depending on its size. I can, you want to read that and then sign it if you're happy. The operation is straightforward, but there's no guarantee that John will be able to play again. I'm starting to feel sleepy soon, okay. <laughs> See if you are, John. <laughs> Okay, it's all nice and pleasant now. It's drifting off, all right? I'm a really good problem. All right. Okay. And first, you have a surgeons got to remove a fragment of loose bone that's been causing John pain since his injury at Christmas. Quite a sizable loose fragment of bone on the attached to the main ankle, ankle bone, which uh, I've excised. The ligament itself was, uh, in part, was intact and other parts obviously been stretched, so putting the stitches through the ligament, through the bone, hopefully we reattach that and strengthen it. He didn't have any inst real instability in the ankle, um, but it, having Having had to uh, reattach the ligament like that, it's got to be protected. It's got to be able to, um, to heal in properly. Hello, John. Operation's all finished. Are you just waiting up in the recovery room? You OK then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The main element of the injury has been the ligament injury. There's no metal work in there. All right? Mm. So we'll see you in the first thing in the morning. OK? okay. Thanks very much. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Building on the new stands will take three months, and the construction workers are already hard at it. So is Ray Coleman, Marine's part time groundsman. Got three loads of 20 ton grade one topsoil. First one this morning, then we've got Tuesday and Wednesday. And in between times, I've got to spread that uh, around the pitch to the areas that require renovation and then we reseed 
next uh, Saturday and Sunday. The old stand's not putting up too much resistance. Nothing that a crowbar and a bit of grunting can't handle anyway. The actual pitch now it really needs a lot of hours on it, and I'll be on it probably six, seven hours a day, uh, five, six days a week. Ray's big worry, aside from the builders taking penalties and the gold mouths, is getting some grass back on the pitch. We've got about 12 weeks, 13 weeks between the last game and the first game, and then there's panic stations then waiting for it to grow, and it never grows quick enough because it really is top quality stuff, this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Mate! Well. How are you, lad? Oh, well, yeah, yes, dude. Good to I see you. Don't get up. Nice. You're all right. <laughs> I can't get up. <laughs> I don't want to get up. I can't get up. Flipping there. John's recovering in his back garden. Thank you very much. And stand in Captain Keith Proctor's checking on his progress. Lovely weather for it, anyway. <sighs> yeah. Lovely weather for Look, the Well, oh. he burnt, burnt to cinders. The wrangle over the operation has left the deepest scars. Green said it was bad timing. At the end of the day, I've had to contribute half myself, which is in the region of £1,300. Uh, if I could get back up sponsorship, etc., towards that, then it would come off my half. I still think for the commitment and loyalty that I've shown the club, I should have been sorted out and sorted out earlier, but just got to get on with it now. Barry's pre-season workout is just starting and he's not letting his injuries hold him back. Uh, I'm highly motivated at the moment. We kind of have a nice new stand, nice brand new terracing with uh, the ground looking great and the wall looking horrible. What happens, tends to happen is that the sand, sorry, the soil blows in from the pitch and people put their dirty marks on the wall and those two factors combine to make it look grubby. So it's worth it. It's very rewarding, satisfying when soil finish looks great. The best wall in the Uniband League when it's finished. After 70 years, the shed doesn't put up much resistance to the bulldozers, making way for a stand that'll see the club into the next century. Money is still tight, but the club have avoided relegation and bankruptcy for another season. At this level of football, there's a fine line between sinking and treading water. Marine are past masters at staying afloat. Welcome. You're listening to It's Round and It's Right on a Saturday morning. Turns into a Saturday lunchtime, turns into a Saturday afternoon. And by then it's time for the football. You're absolutely right. Actually, now's the time for the football. It starts now. Three hours. You're on your way. You're on your way to a game. Journalist ball. Michael Hand's been following Marine all season for the football magazine 442. Oh, fabulous. I wish I could do that. Yeah. Everyone thinks that football is all about community. I go along and watch QPR when I can. Got a season ticket there. And we always think, yeah, it's community, we have our fanzines, we all talk to each other, sitting in our regular seats. But it's, it's not like Marine. I mean, obviously, when you've only got 250, 300 people turning up on a regular basis, you do all get to know each other an awful lot more quickly than you do if there's 15,000, 20,000, 40,000. If you wanted, if you wanted to be at Port Vale this afternoon, I personally would make arrangements <laughs> to see that that was possible. But so I, I know, I, really I know cannot. you're not man enough. I mean, who is man enough? Who is man enough for Charlton v Blackburn this oh. afternoon? Oh, nerve clenching! It I really is. It is butter clenching football this time. Um, I remember. A couple it's of like a family. They're they're not like an ordinary football club. There's no one in there for the business relationship at all. They're all in there because they're family, and that means they bicker like families, but also they make up like families as well. You're listening to It's Round This White right here on Talk Radio, 10.53, 10.89, on the medium wave. We're with you till two. Well, to anyone who's used to watching top-class football, it's a bit of a shock. And we have to remember that these people can still play football a million times better than you or I could. They can make sure that a pass goes to the right person, but the problem is they've got bumpy pitches. They're not as fit as the top-class pros because they have to do day jobs. So it, it, it's, not watching, it's not like watching the same game and talking to the Marine fans. They know that. They go to Marine for completely different reasons. It's related to the social aspects. It's related to the fact they feel part of something. If they go down to Liverpool every week, they're part of the 40,000 at Anfield. They're just turnstile fodder. All they're there for is their money. At Marine, by being a member of the Marine Supporters Association, they really feel like they're part of something. They're making a contribution to a wider whole. It's like a microcosm of society without wanting to sound too ridiculous. I'm going to make a statement now. I think that if I was just starting out in football, 
in non-league football now, I don't think I'd last 27 weeks. I don't know about 27 years. Because the game has changed so much uh, and the attitude of players has changed so much. I don't think football has changed that much. Uh, they still put boots on, there's still a ball there, it's got to be passed, it's got to be put in the net, it's got to be controlled. But again, I, I think that people are different, or players are different, because they've got so much more uh, to think about these days. I don't think it's for the better, really. In goal, Chris Clark. Number two, Chris Price. Number three, Keith Foster. Number four, Teddy Burns. Number five, Mark Schofield. Number six, Michael Douglas. Number seven, John Morgan. Number eight, Rick Bainbridge. Number nine, Richie Townsend. Number 10, Barry McMillan. And number 11, Ian Bain.